Today we're going to paint a Tuscan landscape. So we're going to start off by blocking in the sky. I use French ultramarine plus white at the top and cerulean plus white at the horizon. Then I'll blend them together to give us that lovely distance in the sky. Although it's a beautiful summer's day, we're still going to add some clouds to keep the sky interesting. Use titanium white and a touch of orange in it to paint the clouds. This warms up your clouds and allows you to add white highlights later on. I use a soft filbert brush to create my own random cloud shapes. Now painting the distant mountains. Block them in using a grey green and highlight by adding more orange and white to the mix. Don't try to paint any detail in these mountains. The mountains are simply too far away. To paint the trees behind the houses, I've mixed up three sets of greens, one for each tree. Each set has a highlight color, mid-tone color, and a shadow color. I'll now create the shape of the tree using the shadow color. I'll add color to the tree using the mid-tone, and I'll add depth and dimension to the tree using the highlight color. For the branches, I'll use raw umber and a rigger brush. To paint the distant trees and foliage, add sky color to these original tree colors and that will make them look further away. Paint the poplar trees using a wedge shape action, this way, that way, this way, that way. This front foliage area I will just block in for now and add the details in later. So let's move on and paint the house. Our sun is coming from the left in this painting. so. Make sure the left wall is brighter than the right to show that the walls are at different angles. Do the same for the roof, and the veranda, and the chimney. Also notice that I've added a shadow all the way along the top of each wall to show that the roof has an overhang. Block in the windows with a dark grey, and then show the thickness of the wall by painting a little highlight all the way down the length. With a veranda, there's heaps of details if you look on the photo. I'm not even going to try and paint all that detail in. The, the veranda is simply too far away. So what I'm going to do is just concentrate on the basics. I'm going to get the pillars in, in their correct places with their different tonal values. And then I'm going to paint these roof posts and make sure that their angles are correct. The wall in front of the veranda is made of stone. But again, I'm not going to try and get that detail in. It's too far away, so I'll just simply block it in with um, some of the stone colors that I see and just a mottled effect. Your brain will fill in those details for you when you're looking at the final painting. Now we can use these same wall colors to paint the foreground wall. So start off by blocking in with the darkest tones, making the left side of each wall lighter to show that the sun is coming from the left. For the path, block in using a brick color and then shade the foreground darker and what that will do is flatten out the path and give you a looking in effect. Now we can paint the rocks on the walls using a few different colors. So just look at the wall and see what colors you see and mix them up and then just use your finger to dab these different colors on and that will give you a lovely mottled effect. So at the moment obviously it looks terrible but the minute we come back in with a darker raw umber type of color and we paint in the grouting between the rocks or in between the the bricks suddenly all that makes sense and all this mottled effect makes each brick look unique or each rock look unique so that's pretty cool what is important is when you do paint this grouting in make sure that you get the angles of the grouting correct otherwise your perspective is not going to look right Awesome! Let's move on to the poles on this front veranda. I'll use raw umber to paint the poles in. Again, I'm looking at those angles. I'm going to get those angles right to get the perspective correct. Then to add color to them, I'm going to use burnt sienna. And those lovely sunspots, I'm going to add white into the burnt sienna and paint it in with that. Okay, I think we can now head back to that distant veranda and let's go and paint in that lovely hanging bogan villa. So darken up some crimson with French ultramarine and paint in the flowers. Try and get a hanging effect when you, when you do that. So observe the shape that those flowers are in quite carefully. 
Add color to the flowers using reds and highlight them with a pink color. For the front veranda, we're going to do a similar effect, but this time we're going to use greens. And that's going to make it look like a creeper that's uh, growing on this veranda. And as I paint this creeper, I'm going to gradually grow it down the wall so that it, that it looks natural. So I'm going to use the photo um, as my reference to get a feel for how is this creeper growing down the wall. But I'm not going to try and follow these shapes perfectly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use it as inspiration and paint my own shapes onto the wall. So again, use your dark to get the shape. Use the mid-tone green to add color and use the highlight color to add sun. So you'll see at the top there's some really bright highlight sunny bits. So I've added neat cadmium yellow to get those lovely highlights in there. And while you're painting this area, you may as well just uh, do these bushes in front. So again, use a different green for each bush to separate them so they look different. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a cast shadow for each one of these bushes. So although the wall is there, so you're technically not going to see a cast shadow. Um, I'm going to put it in anyway because those cast shadows make the, the sunlit bits in between the shadows look brighter and it gives you that illusion of, of lovely streaming sunlight through the painting. Now we can finalize the painting by adding the plants to the right of the path. Remember, again, use different greens for each plant to make them separate from each other. Otherwise, if you don't, they're going to just blend into each other. And we don't want that. Cool, let's add a few little loose leaves lying on the path and two or three Tweety Birds flying in the sky. And with that, our painting should be done. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please like the video and uh, leave a comment below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials.